Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, as I said last week, is the last empties from 2023 because nothing like nearly being in February 2024 for actually finishing your last empties of the previous year. But yeah, let's get on into it and see what I used up in the last two months of 2023. Starting with the smallest number of items to talk about, I used up four perfumes. Not too much to say about these because I used up the 10 Crosby Street one in my main project pan in 2023 and I used up the three minis from Guerlain, Eau de Cashmere, Eau de Lis, and Eau de Lingerie through my 2023 12 pans of Christmas. So you've all heard me talk about these. The mini ones from Guerlain were worth $13.50 each. The Derek Glam one was worth $160. So altogether I used up four items worth $200.50 from my perfume inventory. The second smallest category is usually makeup but actually for these last two months it has been hair care. So I have seven items of hair care that I finished. So to go from left to right I finished two shampoos. The new new one from Davines and the peppermint shampoo from Malin and Gats. I actually ended up using up both of them from washing my makeup brushes with them rather than my hair. I did give the Nunu one a go on my hair, but I have got very fine hair, it's prone to being oily, it's prone to being weighed down, and I did find that this made me feel like my hair got oily more quickly, I felt like I needed to wash it again more quickly, I felt like it just kind of weighed it down and was a bit too heavy, so probably a really good one for anyone with sort of super dry damaged hair, but wouldn't be a repurchase for me. The Melanin Gats I didn't actually use in my hair, but I did use it in my makeup brushes and I very much enjoyed the smell. Also from Melanin Gats I used up the cilantro hair conditioner, so I used that in my actual hair, it was absolutely fine. I am really pleased to say I used up two hair masks, so Olaplex number three, I already have another one of this. If I didn't, I would definitely be looking to repurchase it. It's not a weekly thing for me. It's just something I use every so often, but I do think it makes a difference. And then I also used up the Living Proof Perfect Hair Day Weightless Mask. It was fine. If I got another, this was obviously a deluxe sample size. If I got another deluxe sample size, I would use it up again quite happily, but I don't think I would rush out to purchase it. I am also really pleased to say that I used up one of these products from my blow dry balm stash. If you have been with me for a while you will know I have lots and lots of these and I use them very infrequently so I'm on a bit of a mission through 2024 to try and seriously reduce my numbers with this one but really glad that I knocked this little one out by the end of 2023. And then last but not least I used up the Olaplex dry shampoo. I wasn't blown away with this. I thought it, it did its job but it just didn't do it as effectively as my beloved IGK charcoal dry shampoo. I think if you're somebody who doesn't like the feeling of any kind of residue or anything in their hair, it's a really sort of invisible lightweight dry shampoo, but for somebody who has oily hair, who, you know, wants to use it after being to the gym or whatever and make it look like it doesn't need washed, it didn't quite cut the mustard for me. All in all for hair, I used up seven items worth $89.37, so I am very pleased with that as an end to last year. On to makeup, I used up nine items, which I'm really happy with. First of all, I used the Rare Beauty Always an Optimist Primer. This was in my 12 pans of Christmas, so you've already heard me speak about this, but I did really enjoy it and would definitely repurchase it. I used up two foundation samples. These were both from Guerlain. One was the Terracotta Foundation and one was the Matte Foundation. I really enjoyed both of these. What I did was I used up, I had samples of the shade 0 and the shade 1, so I used up the two samples of the shades 1, at like Christmas parties and things when it was kind of dark and you wouldn't see my makeup perfectly because the shades were a little bit too dark for me. I'm definitely a zero and not a one but I loved both of those foundations. I would definitely definitely purchase them in the future. I've got quite a few foundations in my stash and I'm hoping 2024 will see a significant reduction in the numbers but once I do get it down to something more manageable I would definitely purchase both of those foundations. The terracotta ones, a little bit less coverage, a little bit more natural, a little bit sort of dewier and the matte ones obviously sort of higher coverage, a bit more of a sort of high maintenance looking finish. I loved both of them, they were both beautiful and I would have both of them in my collection in a heartbeat. I also finished up the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer, I have fully taken the stopper out, used it all. I did really enjoy this concealer, I would definitely purchase it again. I am very interested in the Huda Beauty one, I've not tried that before, but I do have a couple of concealers that I want to finish up before I buy any new ones, but I would definitely repurchase that one but there are some others I'd like to play with. If you have tried both the Tarte one and the Huda Beauty one, do report back down below, let me know what your thoughts were. I'm also very interested in the new Natasha Denona one, it's not that new anymore but 
somewhat new Natasha Denona one. So yeah, I, there's a lot of concealers piquing my interest at the moment, but I did very much enjoy Tarte Shape Tape and would definitely have it again uh, without complaint. A surprise empty for me was this Kat Von D eyeliner. Now obviously the fact it actually is Kat Von D, it's not even KVD Beauty, it gives you an idea of the age of it. But I didn't think I'd used it all that much. I've obviously just had it for so long and over the years we've we've hit the end. But I went to use it towards the end of December a few times and yeah, I got the, the very last out of it and then it was just completely not giving me any more. So, a little bit of a surprise empty. This was the shade Bukowski, which was a beautiful deep green. I would definitely purchase another deep green eyeliner. Obviously, you can't get this one anymore in its form as is there. I've not really paid attention to what KVD Beauty have got in terms of their eyeliners, but... Another green liquid eyeliner would be very welcome in my collection. I finished up my MAC brow pencil, that was in my 12 pans of Christmas, so you've heard me talk about that, I won't bore you with it. This here, not that you can really tell because all the writing has rubbed off, was one of the Fresh Beauty lip balms and I did gouge right into it and finish it up. I really enjoy these, they are quite melty, they're definitely better if you keep them in the fridge, but I do think they do a really good job. They were a very cult product for a long time and there is a reason for that. I was happy to use this one up. I've got some more in my stash that I will hopefully use up in 2024 and I would happily bring more in once I have worked through what I've got. And last but not least, I used up two mascaras. First of all, this Caution one from Hourglass. This has been a bit of a journey. So I had a full size of this, which I loved. It was my favourite mascara. And then I got this little mini one in my advent calendar in 2022. And because I'd loved the full size so much, I kind of held on to this and tried to use it in special occasions. But the full size I found never smudged on me, whereas this one did at first. As it got to the end of its life it stopped, it kind of dried out so I think it's one of those mascaras that you maybe need to open and let dry out a little bit and then use but I didn't find that with the full size. I just opened that and from the get go there was no smudging but I'd had it for a little while before I opened it so I don't know if it kind of dried up of its own accord in my collection. I don't know. I love the full size, had a little bit of a smudge issue with the mini at first but not enough to put me off. I would definitely purchase the full size of this mascara again, so we'll see, we'll see what happens in 2024. And then because I am a smudger, I usually have a tubing mascara at any point to layer over mascaras that do smudge. And for a while I was using this DHC one, but it is now finished, so we've got it for the empties. It does its job, it keeps things in place. They're never very good on their own tubing mascaras. They generally need to be layered over a mascara that makes more impact and then used to seal it in. But they definitely do their job, so I can't complain. So those are my makeup empties, and there were nine of them, totaling $120.83. As always, skincare made up the majority of my empties, so let's go through that. Garnier Micellar Water have used up many in the past, will use up many in the future. I don't think anybody needs an introduction to that product. The Omra Vitsa Cleanser, I used that up through my 12 pans of Christmas, so won't talk too much about it. It was fine, wouldn't rush to repurchase it. Fresh Rose Serum, if you watched my main project fan this year, you know the saga with this. I really enjoyed this at first, it definitely went off. I can't complain in that it was older than whatever it says it should be, I think it said 12 months. Yes, 12 months is the advice time there, so it definitely was older than 12 months. I think it was probably coming up on about two years in my collection. But I've had other products for two years that have not gone off, so... I think given as well if you look at the markings from my project pan how little I was using this every month until it went off and then I just started using it on my body to get rid of it. You know I wouldn't go through this full bottle in 12 months so I feel like if I repurchased that it would go off again before I could finish it so that would slightly put me off with that one. Other serums that I finished up, Sunday Riley Good Jeans. I really enjoyed this actually. Once I got into it, I would definitely repurchase that and try and keep it in my routine. I did definitely see a difference in my skin using it. Dr. Dennis Gross Fill and Repair Serum. I got a full size of that for Christmas, so obviously I liked the sample enough to ask for that and I'm looking forward to using it in my routine and yeah, I feel like I, I see not super like life-changing results but I do see a bit of a difference with it I think in my fine lines so I'm looking forward to seeing what impact using the full size has on my routine for a longer period of time. And then another really good product that I enjoyed was the Medicaid Retinol. Again this was through my 12 pans of Christmas that I worked this into my routine and used it up. Like Good Jeans I saw a difference with it. 
I've always been a little bit scared of retinol, I get very sensitive and reactive skin, but I found this one definitely made a difference. I could see a difference in my skin, but I never felt my skin was irritated with it. I only used it maybe two or three times a week. I wasn't using it every night, but I've got another one of this and I am looking forward to keeping using it in 2024. Onto eye products, I used up one set of these eye gels. These are a one-use thing. I mean, they're nice before an event or something. Like, they're fine. They're a nice indulgence. And I also used up the SVR eye cream. So I got that when I was in Paris in 2023. I would get it again from a French pharmacy, but I don't think I would pay the imported price for it. It was absolutely fine if you've got sensitive reactive skin. It was nice, it was hydrating without irritating, but you can get like La Roche-Posay or whatever here for a much cheaper price. So I would probably go, if you like the La Roche-Posay Telerian eye cream, you would like this one. Facial moisturiser again, 12 pounds of Christmas product here and it's my Kiehl's Ultra Facial Cream. This was a huge tub and I'm glad to have Worked it out of my collection. I did enjoy it. It was absolutely fine. I would use it again if I got it again, but I don't think I would rush to buy this specific one. I absolutely would rush to buy this from Ultraviolet. So this is the Hydrating Facial Sunscreen SPF 50. I get this in my advent calendar last year, so I didn't like pick it out or anything. Um, but I absolutely loved this sunscreen. I thought it was so beautiful in the skin. It felt really lightweight, but it was an SPF 50 plus. And it didn't pill. I'm having a huge issue at the moment with things pilling. And there was no pilling with this. I could go straight in with my makeup. Really, really enjoyed this. Definitely would purchase it again. I was on a bit of a mission to try and finish up some face masks before the end of the year. And I did manage that. So I used up the Sizzly mask. That was through my main project plan in 2023. I enjoyed it, but I wouldn't pay Sizzly prices for this mask. Just jumping over here, I also used up the Kiehl's clay mask. And that is probably the one I would repurchase in terms of a clay mask. I feel like I really see a difference with that but it's not too harsh it doesn't dry my skin out but it definitely lifts out excess oil and leaves my skin looking sort of clearer and more radiant. I also really enjoyed that fresh floral recovery mask but I do think fresh skincare is quite expensive so I don't know if I'd rush to buy it but I definitely would quite like some more deluxe samples of it. I would I would enjoy using more samples of that. Another Sizzly mask there the velvet one the overnight one that was really good I enjoyed that one and I would quite happily take more samples of it but again I'm not sure I would pay the actual asking price for it. Origins Drink Up Intensive is a classic I'm sure it needs no introduction really enjoy that one and the Kiehl's Ginger Leaf and Hibiscus Firming Mask was again really enjoyable maybe not rush to purchase it but I would definitely use it up again if I got more samples. On to treatments I used up the Polish Choice 2% BHA exfoliating liquid. I did really enjoy this and I definitely think it helped keep my skin quite clear. I am very oily, very prone to blackheads so I definitely do notice a difference when I've got something like this in my routine but this particular one, the smell is awful. I'm sure there must be a similar product that does a similar job that does not smell as bad so I think I'll be looking for that once I finish up. I've finished this and what I'm using now in place of it is the same product basically from Polish Choice but it's the gel rather than the liquid exfoliant. Of the two I definitely prefer the liquid, I'm not too keen on the gel. Definitely want something like this in my routine, I do think it makes a difference in the clarity of my skin but the smell in this one is not great. Body exfoliant, I used up the Bombdia Body Scrub from Sol de Janeiro. I did really like that, but I found myself slightly allergic to it. What had really attracted me about this is that it's an AHA BHA as well as a manual exfoliant, so turning the shower off essentially, using it in my body and letting it sit there to try and let the AHA and BHA work in a little bit. But I found I would get quite itchy with it, so as much as I enjoyed it um, and I enjoyed the smell, my skin did not particularly love it. It was fine in my legs, I just couldn't really use it in my upper body, so I don't think I'd rush to repurchase this exact one just to use it on my legs. The L'Occitane Shower Oil, I absolutely adore this product, I've talked about it before, I've gone through many of these. These are actually refillable, so I definitely will be holding on to this bottle and I will definitely be purchasing the refill at some point in the future. My Lush Massage Bar, that was used up through my £12 of Christmas, so... I won't talk too much about that, but there's the empty case for it to denote its presence. My hand cream again from 12 Pans of Christmas, so I won't talk too much about that. And then the last things that I used up, one of my Patchology foot peels. I've talked about these before. These are excellent. You use them, you then have to wait about two weeks before you see it start to take effect. But within about two weeks, your feet start to peel. And then after the peeling process, which is awful, is done, you're left with like baby soft feet. These are 
incredible I would recommend them to anyone and I have another two in my collection I bought a pack of four so I definitely will be using the other two and repurchasing in the future and then the last two things that I used up were just two little samples which contributed two dollars to my overall numbers so speaking of overall numbers my skincare empties for the last two months of 2023 total 24 items worth $574.31. Where I am overall for my November and December empties is that in total I used up $985.01 worth of product and that was across 44 products altogether. So thank you very much for watching this video. I hope you've enjoyed it and I will see you next week to close off my 2023 inventories and see if I hit my goals for the overall year.